Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally filming my second trimester update video. I wasn't actually going to film this because I've left it so late, like I'm literally about to pop, I'm almost 38 weeks pregnant, but because I filmed a first trimester update and I have all of my weekly symptoms written down on my phone for the whole of the second trimester, I know I'll be annoyed if I don't film it. And it's also really nice to have to look back on. I also really need to film a third trimester update before she makes an appearance because that's almost over. So this is probably going to be a long one. Like I said, I've written down weekly symptoms and just general feelings and changes in my body for the whole of the second trimester. The second trimester in general was better in a lot of ways compared to the first one. There was more going on, but at the same time, there was a lot more challenges and some struggles which I will talk about in this video so please give this a thumbs up if you enjoy it I can't believe I'm at the end of my pregnancy now I could go into labour at any time it's just crazy I'm so excited but I'm also really scared if you're not subscribed to my channel already and you'd like to see weekly videos from me then it would mean a lot if you could subscribe and I guess we will start with week 14 which is when the second trimester begins. So I've written down at week 14 that I had a lot of appointments booked in. So I booked a private gender scan for when I was 16 weeks. The reason I booked a private scan was because you don't get a normal scan at the hospital until 20 weeks, unless there's a problem for whatever reason and they need to give you a scan. But for me, my 20 week scan was the next one so 12 weeks and 20 weeks and that just felt like such a long time to wait to find out the gender of our baby i know that so many people keep the gender a surprise for the actual birth but we just couldn't do it we were so excited so yeah i booked that at 14 weeks my 20 week scan was also booked in even though that seemed like ages away and i also had a 16 week midwife appointment booked in around this time as well I think it was literally two days after my gender scan so yeah the start of the second trimester was all about booking in my appointments getting all of that done i'll talk more about the appointments when it gets to the weeks that they happened in if that makes sense so around 14 and 15 weeks pregnant i've written down that this is when i started to get more aches and pains not so much in my belly just my general body was starting to get quite achy and I was definitely feeling pregnant. So I left the first trimester feeling pregnant. I had a little bump. I didn't suddenly then pop out and get a massive bump and that's what was causing the aches and pains. I think it was just a general tired feeling throughout my whole body. My muscles felt quite weak and I was starting to feel a little bit of strain on places like my legs, down on my calves which was probably from the weight of my bump and the baby even though it was still relatively small especially compared to now I'm absolutely huge but yeah I've written down that it wasn't unbearable like I didn't have to take any painkillers I wasn't crying over them but they were becoming gradually more uncomfortable to the point where some days I would just do nothing and stay in bed and I found that really helped just resting even though I do find it quite hard to rest I'm always running around tidying cleaning yeah I had to listen to my body and slow down this was also when I started getting my first stretch marks on my bum and thigh area so I'd already had some stretch marks around my boobs but I started getting them at the side of my bum going down my thigh I will talk more about like my body changes in a separate video just because it's something that I did really struggle with and I know a lot of women do it's just one of those things I feel like stretch marks if you're gonna get them you're gonna get them and when I did start getting them even though I already had some on my boobs because my skin on my bum and thighs was quite smooth and I've always liked that area of my body to start seeing red veiny looking stretch marks it did really upset me and as the weeks went on and they increased it definitely made me feel quite sad I guess I knew obviously the whole time like I'm growing a baby that's why I have them but it is really hard to come to terms with the changes that are going on in your body when you've never experienced them before but it's crazy now because I have so many stretch marks in that area and I'm okay with that now. I don't absolutely love them, they're just there and I know they will go, but 
I remember getting the first ones and thinking, oh my God, this is so disgusting, I'm so ugly, and absolutely crying my eyes out over them. And when I look back at those photos, like the first stretch marks, they look completely fine. Like they still look fine now, but they were nothing compared to what I have now. If only I knew. So just before the gender scan at 16 weeks, I've written down that I was feeling a little bit run down. I also had a cold sore and a breakout, which I hadn't had yet in pregnancy. I normally only get spots when I'm about to start my period and obviously being pregnant, I haven't had a period for a long time, thank God. But I normally get one big spot around my chin area every time the time of the month comes along. So being pregnant, I was expecting a lovely pregnancy glow. However, just before 16 weeks, I had a breakout all over my chin. I'm currently having one now. I've tried to cover it with makeup, but around this point, I did start getting spotty and I had a cold sore, which is always a sign that I need to just relax and calm down because it normally means I'm doing too much and my body is starting to feel it. I was also really emotional when I was approaching 16 weeks but I've written down that I wasn't in a sad way so nothing happened to like trigger this emotion. I think I was just feeling quite overwhelmed, everything was feeling more real and I would just cry over anything and everything. So yeah, lots of tears around this point. And then at 16 weeks, we have the gender scan, which I was just talking about. So like I said, we booked privately. We went with peekaboo baby i can't remember how much it was but we had like a package deal which i think is always worth it and like i said you still can find out the gender of your baby at your 20 week scan but we were too impatient i was allowed to bring ryan with me which i was so happy about because being pregnant during the pandemic he wasn't allowed to come to my first scan my 12 week scan which really upset both of us it was an amazing experience and even though he got to see the scan photos like I spoke about in my first trimester video, he didn't get to see the baby on the screen for the first ever time, which even now when I think about it is so sad. There's just nothing we could have done, he wasn't allowed to go because of the restrictions. So private scans are also really good for you to be able to have your partner or your mum, whoever you want with you so they can experience it and see the baby on the screen. So we went to the scan expecting to find out that we were having a little boy. I don't know why, we were just feeling like it. And if you've watched my gender predictions video, then a lot of our family and friends thought we were having a boy as well. So we went in and I hopped up on the bed. Ryan was sat next to me. This was obviously the first time he'd seen the baby on the screen. So as soon as it popped up, I bet that felt like so amazing for him because he'd never seen her before, even though at this point we didn't know it was a her. So we had a general like well-being check, the lady checked the baby, she confirmed how many weeks I was by measuring the baby and stuff like that, everything was completely fine. And it was so lovely to be able to see the baby with Ryan, she was wriggling around. And before the lady actually looked at the gender, I think she had a little sneak peek, but she didn't say she was going to tell us the gender right there and then. We were just looking at the side profile of the baby, so when you see a scan photo, like the typical side profile, we were just looking at that and Ryan looked at it and he said, I think that looks like a little girl and the lady went quiet, which I thought meant she was going to say, actually you're wrong, it's a little boy, but instead she double checked and she said, I think your boyfriend's after my job because it's a little girl and she showed us and it was in fact a little girl, our daughter. So Ryan called it straight away. I feel like he just knew. He had said previously he has like a deep feeling that it's a girl but because everyone was saying boy we sort of just ran with that. So her dad knew she was a little girl. He said it straight away as soon as he saw her. We also got scam photos from there, quite a lot actually. She printed out loads, which was really nice, especially seeing as you are paying for it. So yeah, from this point onwards in the second trimester, we definitely felt more connected to the baby. I know that might sound silly, but when you find out the gender, even though it's not important, like we genuinely didn't care. And if for whatever reason we couldn't find out the gender, then we would have been happy to have either but I found that in pregnancy any scan you go to any little bit of information that you find out about your baby it just sort of brings you closer and you feel like you know them more so we were so happy to find out the gender and to find out that we were having a little girl and around 17 weeks just after we found out the gender my belly did seem to pop out a little bit more 
and everything was sort of stretching this is sort of leading on from the aches and pains but it was more in my belly I could feel my belly actually stretching and I had been feeling slight movements sort of like little hiccups low down in my belly not big enough or strong enough to be able to record them or see them or show Ryan and a few times Ryan had gone to feel my belly and I was like she's kicking can you feel it and he just couldn't feel it because I think I was feeling it internally if that makes sense but at 17 weeks I was driving and Ryan put his hand on my belly I think he was just saying hello to the baby and she kicked and I was about to say oh she just kicked but I bet you didn't feel it and he was like oh my god like I literally just felt her kick and he was really taken back but he was so buzzing over it because it was the first time that he felt her and it is such an amazing feeling and it was nice to know that he could finally feel her after I'd been feeling these little small movements around this point as well not only was I having a breakout on my chin I started to get like a cluster of spots on my shoulder which I'm guessing is to do with hormones I hadn't used any like new bath products or anything but I had these really sore spots on my shoulder and they were there for ages they felt like bites but they weren't they were like little sore red spots at 18 weeks I had more energy I feel like in the second trimester overall I had a lot more energy which a lot of people do say especially if you don't suffer with morning sickness and stuff it is the point in pregnancy where you just find the energy to do things even if deep down you are quite tired and your body is aching you will just start doing things like organizing a nursery or sorting out clothes and that's definitely what I was doing to be honest I've been doing that ever since but it started in the second trimester I sort of got my organization on and started working out what I needed to do what we needed to get one of the bedrooms was being decorated as well so I did feel quite useless because I wasn't allowed to do things like get up and down the ladder in any way I could I was trying to help with the general just organizing and tidying but I've also written down that I then needed to just relax like I would have this surge of energy and then it was like my body said that's enough now like you are still pregnant you're still growing a child go to bed and that's exactly what I did. 19 weeks was a fun one because this was when I had my first experience with heartburn and heartburn is something I've never had in my life. No matter what I've eaten, anything spicy, stuff like that, I've never experienced heartburn and I know in pregnancy it's really common and I would hear people talk about it and I think it can't be that bad, like it's probably just a little bit of a weird feeling in your throat or down in your chest. But when I had it, I was like, oh my god, what is this? Like, is it heartburn or is it something worse? Because this feels absolutely horrible. It's like I had a fire in my throat. And I didn't suffer with morning sickness at all. Like, I never actually threw up. And even up until now, I haven't thrown up in pregnancy from morning sickness. But when I was having this little taste of heartburn in the second trimester, we ordered a takeaway and I was really struggling to eat it it wasn't really nice anyway in my opinion but the heartburn was making it difficult to go down as you can probably imagine and I had a few mouthfuls and then I actually threw up so it wasn't through morning sickness or nausea but the heartburn was so uncomfortable that when I tried to eat it just wouldn't go down and I had a bit of like acid and stuff come up as well as the food I know that's not very nice but I'm just trying to tell you honestly what was going on and I wasn't really sure what I was allowed to take for it because I hadn't experienced it before I know if it's really bad you can get stuff from the doctor but this was just a one-off at this point I have had it since um but not as bad but because this was my first time having it it was quite gross I didn't enjoy it and I don't like Gaviscon, even the tablets I found quite chalky, so I ordered some Tums, I think they're called, and they literally taste like sweets, so I took one of those and it went literally instantly. So I would definitely recommend those if you have heartburn, which isn't too bad that you need to go to the doctor about it, but you just have a bit of a fiery, unsettled feeling in your throat and chest. Then if I skip to 20 weeks, this is when I had my 20 week anomaly scan at the hospital. Ryan was allowed to come because in Wales they then changed the restrictions. Literally just after my 12 week scan, they changed it to partners being allowed to go to the first scan and the 20 week scan, which was really annoying because Ryan just missed out on the first one. But he'd been to the private one and now he was allowed to go to this one. So at this scan, they just check everything to do with the baby basically is quite long 
um, but it's also really interesting and even though the screen wasn't turned towards me while she was measuring all of the baby, Ryan was sat in the chair next to me and he could see everything and I think he was really amazed at seeing all of like her limbs and her belly and stuff like that. So everything was absolutely fine at this scan, no problems, which I feel really lucky to be able to say that but yeah it was another scan another chance to see our baby so it was really nice I remember actually at the end the lady said is there anything else like do you have any questions and I think she was hinting towards like do you want to find out the gender because I don't think they willingly tell you because a lot of people do keep it a surprise nowadays and I thought she meant like general questions like was I concerned about the baby so I just said no I was so happy at the fact that everything was fine and we left and Ryan was like you didn't ask her the gender of the baby and I was like oh yeah and then we just had this feeling of like what if it's not a little girl even though we'd seen quite clearly that she was a little girl at the private scan I just thought oh my god like what if she's actually not a little girl and it's a little boy we knew deep down and we had the other scan photos to show it and it was quite obvious but yeah it was quite funny because Ryan started panicking he was like why did you not ask her like you were meant to ask and I just completely forgot from 20 weeks onwards and even up until now every morning I would get some light cramping and the feeling like I need to go to the toilet I wouldn't always go to the toilet especially if I hadn't had my breakfast but I would wake up with the feeling as if I was going to start my period and I'm guessing that's just where everything was stretching and the baby was putting pressure right down there it would cause that like I need to go to the toilet sensation and I still get that now and it's gotten not worse because it's not too bad but in the morning it is quite uncomfortable and I have to get up when I was 21 weeks pregnant we went to Copenhagen we weren't sure if we were going to be able to go because of the coronavirus but we were allowed to travel and we were really safe and we went there, it was for Ryan's birthday so my present to him. While we were in Copenhagen she started moving a lot more so in the morning when I would wake up we would talk to her and Ryan would touch my belly and he could feel the movements getting stronger which was really nice. This holiday was so lovely because we did so much and we did a lot of walking so every day we would get up, we would walk from the hotel to whatever sort of tourist thing we were going to attraction like Tivoli Gardens and stuff like that and because the weather was nice we didn't really care how far away it was so some days we might have walked just like 20 minutes away but other times we would walk up to like an hour away from the hotel which normally for me would be fine I like walking but being pregnant and starting to feel the weight of the baby and the weight that I'd put on, like the general weight I'd put on, on my body, walking was quite difficult and uncomfortable, especially when it was warm as well. So I put weight on my thighs and I could start to feel them like rubbing together, which isn't nice when you're walking for a long time. So we would walk away from where we were staying in the hotel and then obviously we would walk back as well so that's double the distance or time but while we were out we would then walk around wherever we were and be on our feet all day and like I said normally that would be absolutely fine but because I was pregnant I did really struggle and it got to the point where one day walking back I literally felt like my legs were just going to give way like I felt like I was going to collapse and I was just latching onto Ryan and we could see the hotel and it was only a block away and my legs every single step was just agony and I thought oh my god like I felt so unfit and so like incapable but obviously it's not my fault it was just because of how my body was changing and I definitely overdid it with the walking but I'm glad I did because we got to do so much we could have gotten taxis obviously and we did one day when I was really struggling but it just felt so nice to walk and go and explore but at the same time part of me did wish I wasn't as heavy or wasn't that far along in the pregnancy but then it's weird because if we would have gone in the first trimester that's when I felt really tired so I doubt I would have walked that much then so the second trimester I had the energy and like the mental thing of yeah let's go and walk and let's go and do this and this and this and because you're on holiday you want to do as much as you can but at the same time my body was like no I'm struggling so yeah most nights I remember getting up to the toilet in the hotel room and I would just hobble to the toilet like it felt like I'd been to the gym and done leg day not that I've ever done that in my life but when I hear people talking about like aching legs from the gym that's definitely what it felt like 
and I felt like so big in my body but when I look back I really wasn't like now like I said I'm massive but because I changed a lot in such a short space of time my body was definitely starting to realize that 22 weeks movement was increasing again from the baby which was lovely but this is when because my bump started growing I started having some tightness at the top of my bump which I'd never had before it was also I guess from the weight of my boobs pressing on my bump so if I sat like I am now for too long I would have to sort of stretch out and stand up I also had stopped wearing wired bras a few weeks before this because the wire was pushing into my bump and it was really uncomfortable to sit down so I would just wear like sports bras and non padded non wired bras and I don't know if it caused it but when we got back from Copenhagen obviously I was exhausted my legs were killing me but my stretch marks then got even worse like they just spread all down my thighs and at the end of 22 weeks pregnant, I've written down that I was really upset and having breakdowns over my stretch marks, which I do remember really clearly. I would take photos of them and send them to Ryan and I would say, like, I'm so disgusting, I'm so ugly, look at my body, like, it's ruined, I hate myself, like, the things I would say, it is really upsetting, like, it's not nice at all and it wasn't nice for him to hear it either. Because um, how could I help it, you know what I mean? Like... I'm pregnant, that's just what happens to some people. But I started to really struggle at this point. Like one part of me would be fine and I would say, oh, they're not that bad. Like there is more of them, but they're fine. Like they don't look too bad. And then the next thing I would get out of the bath, be stood there naked in the mirror and I would just burst into tears. Like I was the most ugly, gross, vile person in the world. So that was really mentally draining on Ryan as well because he had to listen to it even though he supported me, like, I know I wouldn't like it if he was constantly talking bad about himself. But yeah, I did really struggle mentally at this point with the changes that were going on in my body. And then for the next two weeks, so week 23 and week 24, I was still really emotional, probably caused by the breakdowns I was having over the stretch marks, but I was just being really needy to Ryan. I would just say things like, do you love me? Do you still love me? And he was like, obviously. But I was really needy and my stretch marks at 24 weeks then started actually extending above my knicker line. So that was always the way that I judged it. So I'd look in the mirror with my knickers on after the bath and I would see them below my knickers, like down the side of my thighs and then one day I put knickers on which weren't small or anything they just went up to the usual part on my hip and I noticed them starting to creep above the knicker line and I would show Ryan and say oh my god like they're getting out of control they're spreading they were here and now they're here and I just became obsessed with how my stretch marks were developing and it really got to me and really upset me so I was really emotional really needy I felt like so ungrateful for moaning about it because obviously I'm doing such an amazing thing carrying a baby but at the same time it's so hard to just get out of that mindset when you know that that's not what your body used to look like. At 25 weeks Ryan saw my belly move for the first time so he'd been feeling like kicks when he put his hand on my belly but we were laying in bed and he looked over and as she kicked my belly actually moved up which it does now so much and I love it it's such a nice feeling but he saw that for the first time I also had my whooping cough vaccine or jab which they recommend that you get when you're pregnant obviously you don't have to but I decided to get it I was meant to get it as soon as I came back from holiday but there was a bit of a wait and I was meant to get the flu jab at this point as well but everywhere was sold out of the flu jab because of the demand due to the coronavirus everyone was getting it so even though I'm pregnant I wasn't priority they were just doing it for the over 65s like my grampy had his but I couldn't get mine I ended up getting it at Boots literally not long ago but yeah I had my whooping cough when I had it up in my arm and for the next few days it looked like a bite like I had quite a red lump which can happen after that and it was also uncomfortable to sleep on but apart from that it was fine more stretch mark updates at 25 weeks i started getting them on the backs of my legs so up until now they've been down the side and they were extending up above my knicker line but still on the side and then at this point they started appearing behind my knees which i've seen lots of people with stretch marks in those areas and when i see them i don't think they look bad at all but because 
Of course, it was on my body. I acted like it was the end of the world and the worst thing ever. Again, since then, they've got progressively worse, but there's not a lot I can do about it. Um, but yeah, I would take photos of them when they first started. And when I look back at those photos, there's literally like one little squiggly line and it looks like nothing. You probably wouldn't even notice it. And now it looks like I've literally been scrammed down the back of my leg. Then at 25 weeks, because I was feeling so upset and so disgusting basically because of the stretch marks all over me i then got more upset because i started thinking well i haven't exercised all of my pregnancy like i'm on my feet most of the day because i look after my grandpa we went on holiday and like i said we did so much walking but in general i wasn't exercising i didn't go to the gym or anything i wasn't even stretching so i then started to blame myself thinking well if i would have worked out from the start of my pregnancy it might have slowed down the rate at which I put on weight and then that might have slowed down the stretch marks or maybe I still would have had stretch marks but they wouldn't have been as bad and I started really overthinking it but at this point obviously it was too late like whatever stretch marks I had up until now I've got them already like there's nothing I can do but I started really beating myself up over it. I don't have anything written down for week 26 apart from the fact that we booked our 4D scan for two weeks later which I'll talk about when we get to week 28, but a week 27, this was when I started to feel more waves of movement from the baby. So as opposed to just feeling like a little kick or a twinge and my belly moving slightly, I would feel like a big wave as if her arm had just stretched out or she was like wriggling around. At first it did feel really weird, I'm not gonna lie. Like I know people say, oh, it's the most amazing feeling, feeling your baby inside you, it is but it is a little bit weird when you haven't felt it before. It's like there's like a little alien in you, but it is amazing at the same time and they would just get stronger and stronger even up until now. I also then started struggling to sleep at night and I would already wake up a few times in the night to go to the toilet, which is normal during pregnancy, but before this point I was falling asleep okay. Like I would get into bed, put something on the telly and then I would fall asleep. Bearing in mind I'm not someone who falls asleep easily, like I have to watch something or I have to really try to fall asleep and it takes me a while sometimes but at this point in the second trimester I just really started overthinking everything, nothing major, just like thinking about all of the things I needed to get or I needed to get done and I would try to go to bed and my head would just be saying like why don't you get up and go and sort the clothes out or why don't you go and organise her drawers, just silly things like that but it was making me not sleep very well. Even though at this point now I've managed to do everything and I did everything quite soon on which I'm glad about, I just started to feel unprepared even though I had a lot of time left if that makes sense. So at 28 weeks we had our 4D scan, again Ryan was able to come so I'm really glad that we booked this scan even though he came to the 20 week one. I was probably most excited for this one because it's the first time you get to see what your baby looks like. Obviously they change right up until they're born and then even when they are born I find that babies continue to change every single day and it's quite hard to see who they look like but we were really excited for this and I went to Window to the Womb in Cardiff which I would really recommend. It was such a lovely experience, you know, they didn't just show you the baby in 4D and then get you out of there. Like it was really nice. They took their time, they did the full wellbeing check, measured the baby, a normal scan and then also the 4D scan. I had actually planned to get the package where you just get four images from the 4D scan given to you, included in the price. And when we got there, I saw on the sign that there's actually a more expensive package, which allows you to get the full recording of the scan so not just images the full video and all of the images downloaded to an app which you then can store on your phone so you have them forever and obviously with the photos you can go and get them printed out at any time and the video you can put on a usb or you can send it to your friends and family and i didn't even see that option like when i was booking it so on the day we actually changed and we paid a little bit extra to get that I thought we might as well because we're not going to see her in 4D again unless obviously we book another scan which I didn't think we were going to do and we haven't so I'm really glad I got all of those images, I've got them all printed out 
and as well as that included in the bigger package there was the heartbeat beer so you can get a recording of the heartbeat put inside a teddy bear and I picked a bunny and again that's really lovely to have of the baby. So the scan itself they checked everything like I said and they also confirmed the gender so if you haven't yet found out the gender of your baby at your 20 week scan you can find out here. That was obviously reassuring because like I said we had this weird feeling like what if she's not a girl but she was. And then we saw her in 4D which is really weird because before you see your baby you have the normal scan so you can sort of see their features and stuff but not very well. And you always think about what your baby's going to look like but obviously you don't know until they're born so to get this like sneak peek of what they look like and the fact that it's actually them is obviously so amazing and she came up on the screen and even though you don't know what they're going to look like when I saw her I was like that's what I thought she looked like even though it's not if that makes sense I had no idea but I saw her and she was just so lush so flipping cute like you could see her nose she looked just like Ryan she's got Ryan's nose and she had her hands like this, like she was trying to fight someone. And she wouldn't move her hands from her face, like she looked so comfy in there. But it was just so crazy to see. And I think Ryan was so amazed as well, like how you could see so much detail. And like I said, I've got the full recording of it as well. So not only have you got the still images, but I've got the recording of her actually moving. You can see her moving her hands and opening her mouth and stuff. And she's got the cutest lips ever. But as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh my god, that is Ryan all over. She looks so much like him. And she's just so cute. And then finally, the last thing I have written down is 27 weeks. Basically everything just hurting at night. So I would be fine all day. I would try and take it easy. But obviously, like I said, I look after my grandpa. I'm always cleaning. I go and do the shopping, stuff like that. But at night is when I would feel it on my body. And I would try and stretch out in the bed and my legs would cramp up or I would just get the feeling like everything needed to be clicked but nothing would really click it was just like that tense feeling all over my body and that was the last thing that I have written down before I then started a new notes page for the third and final trimester which I can't believe because I've almost finished that now like I'll keep writing on there until she's born but I'll try and film that video as soon as I can. Like I said, I'm almost 38 weeks, so she's due to come any time now. I'm wondering if she's gonna let me get to Christmas and have my Christmas dinner, or if she's gonna come before then or on Christmas day. Either way, I know she'll come when she's ready, but it's just crazy. Like I remember writing all of this second trimester stuff down, but it feels like so long ago. The pregnancy's gone so fast and I can't believe it's time to film the third video like i said please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video